Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for standing by for the fourth quarter and fiscal year 2022 earnings conference call for Who We Are Inc. At this time, all participants are in the listen only mode. Today's conference call is being recorded. I now turn the call over to Ms. Han Yu Liu, Company Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Huya's fourth quarter and fiscal year 2022 earnings conference call. The company's financial and operational results were issued earlier today and are posted online. You can also view the earnings press release by visiting the IR website at ir.huya.com. A replay of the call will be available on the IR website in a few hours. Participants on today's call will be Mr. Rong Jiedong, Chief Executive Officer of Huya, and Ms. Ashley Wu, Vice President of Finance. Management will begin with prepared remarks, and the call will conclude with a Q&A session. Before we continue, please note that today's discussion will contain forward-looking statements made under the safe harbor provisions of the U.S. Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Forward-looking statements involve inherent risks and uncertainties. As such, the company's results may be materially different from the views expressed today. Further information regarding these and other risks and uncertainties is included in the company's prospectus and the other public filings as filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The company does not assume any obligation to update any forward-looking statements except as required under applicable law. Please also note that Huya's earnings press release and this conference call include discussions of unaudited gap financial information as well as unaudited non-gap financial measures. Huya's press release contains a reconciliation of the unaudited non-gap measures to the unaudited, mostly directly comparable gap measures. I will now turn the call over to our CEO, Mr. Rong Jiedong. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our conference call today. Amid the ongoing macro headwinds, 2022 was a volatile year for us. While we delivered standard user growth for the year, our four-year revenues came in at IMB 9.2 billion, showing an annual decline and a net loss. Our focus has been on controlling the aspects of our business where we can make improvements to show up our solid foundation and prepare for growth in a more favorable market environment ahead. In the meanwhile, we have honed our content and product offerings, as, as well as improved our operational efficiency while fulfilling our commitment to corporate social responsibility. I would like to take the opportunity on this call today to share with you some of our progress and the strategy moving forward. On the user side, we continued to bring high quality esports tournaments and entertainment progress to our users. We also further enhanced the broadcaster and the viewer interactive experience by partnering with game studios. As a result, we were able to achieve stable user scale and a healthy user engagement level in the fourth quarter. At the same time, we adopted stringent policies for our marketing spend to keep our expenses down, lowering Q4 sales and marketing expenses by 48% year over year. In the fourth quarter, Huya Labs mobile emails reached 85.5 million, 
slightly up compared with the same period last year. On the annual basis, the mobile MAOs were 84.3 million, growing by 4% from 80.9 million in the 2021. We also maintained our Huya Life app's next month's user retention rate above a 70% average for the full year. Next, let me share with you some highlights on our recent product up updates and uh, collaboration efforts with game companies. We have been expanding our portfolio of live streaming interactive features in addition to the popular gift droppers feature. We recently introduced an upgraded treasure digging feature. These additions further link broadcasters' streaming behaviors with suitable audience and allow not only participating viewers to earn rewards, but also broadcasters to collect rewards for their activities. After a broadcaster completes a certain stream time or other streaming related activities, odds will be released for users to play. Users can also obtain ex exclusive odds by participating in the treasure digging live broadcast room via check ins and uh, posting comments. Odds can then be traded in for a variety of game props provided by the relevant game company. This reward system has been proven highly effective with our users. Last December, together with popular broadcasters on our platform, we launched the Riot Games Carnival treasure digging activities for five major League of Legends IP games. The game studio offered 400,000 pieces of free game tools and a cumulative 2.8 million users participated in the 20-day campaign, achieving a successful outcome from our innovative cooperation. Our collaboration is also a good representation of Huya's continuous effort to provide more services around the games and our ambition to diversify and increase our presence in the game industry value chain. In terms of our video business, our broadcasters continue to be the driving force of video content production with more original creators joining our platform to enrich Huya's supply of video content. It is also worth mentioning that our AI real-time editing function is being utilized more often by our creators. This tool facilitates the creation of live content. Through automatic editing and processing capabilities, we can improve production efficiency and motivate both users and broadcasters. Our efforts to support our creators drove the total number of video uploads in 2022 up by nearly 50% compared with the previous year. Meanwhile, we have been enhancing users' video viewing experience and video content consumption. We did this through both embedded videos 
in our game community and by introduction an immersive vertical video viewing format. With these enhancements, we achieved about 40% growth in total viewing time for on-demand videos on our mobile app in the first quarter, compared with the same period last year. As we build out a more comprehensive video content ecosystem, we believe we can increase user stickiness and also drive communitization across our Huya platform. In terms of our corporate social responsibility initiatives, in 2022, we partnered with over 9,800 broadcasters and held more than 8,000 live streaming sessions promoting positive social impact. Topics covered areas such as traditional culture preservation, environmental protection, and purifying the online environment from negative influence. During the year, we also joined forces with a few international NGOs to launch the Protect Our Home Platform campaign. This included a series of related public awareness activities featuring high-profile KOLs and our leading broadcasters. Additionally, we promoted the campaign by using a new virtual gallery digital format. Millions of tournament viewers also in, enjoyed this new format, which was integrated into our tailor-made virtual esports venue for the 2022 season for LOL World Championship Final in Q4. These efforts have not only enhanced Huya's brand influence, but also contributed to the healthy development of the live streaming industry. While we achieved healthy user scale expansion for the year, we were impacted by the relatively weak market environment in 2022, which contracted user spending power Regularity policies introduced during the year have also placed added pressure on the industry by instituting higher compliance requirements for both gaming and live streaming sectors. Accordingly, we made a prudent adjustment to our products and operations and will continue to strengthen our abilities to meet compliance regulations and ensure our sustainable development. The steps we have taken in 2022 to optimize our operations, costs, and expenses place us in a strong position to benefit once the market begins to recover. Although there are still some uncertainties in the market environment in the near term, we will continue to strengthen our services for users and content creators and provide high quality content in 2023 and going forward. We will also advance our product development capabilities and in, in, implement innovative te technology to further consolidate Huya's core competencies. In doing so, 
we can maximize our advantages and maintain our leading position in the game live streaming market in China. In the meanwhile, we will actively explore our opportunities to diversify our revenue streams and broaden our business ecosystem. With that over overview, I will now turn the call over to our VP of Finance, Ashley Wu, to share more details on our operating metrics and the financials. Ashley, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Zhou, and hello, everyone. Following Mr. Dong's remarks, I'll start with some updates on our content enrichment and diversification initiatives. In the fourth quarter of 2022, we broadcasted over 70 third-party professional esports tournaments, and the total viewership of those events reached approximately 360 million. The largest viewership during the quarter was for LOL World 2022, honor of Kings International Championship, Damascus Cup, and CFS Grand Finals. While the time zone differences between China and the U.S. for World 2022 has some impact on the live broadcast views, the overall viewing data of our core users remain stable. While Rift League Season 2 also gained a lot of traction. In particular, with our deepened cooperation with the LOL while Rift game on tournament viewing, we introduced interactive prediction features and a 4K HDR viewing experience for those matches. These innovative features also make it easier for users to switch between the in-game streaming channel and our platform. The licensed tournament content supply in Q4 was not as high as in previous quarters, mainly due to event seasonality and certain disruption from the COVID-19 resurgence. As such, we added more self-produced programs during the period. In the fourth quarter, we broadcasted over 45 Huya organized esports tournaments and entertainment PGC shows, generating total viewership of approximately 150 million. In addition to fan favorites such as Peacekeeper Elite All Star Annual Invitational and Thunder Series of Honor of Kings, we held the Huya platform qualifier for the Demonstrator Cup, which gained great traction with our users. The commentary programs hosted by well-known streamers and former professional players for both World 2022 and HOK International Championship also helped promote the popularity of those events. Additionally, during the quarter, we launched two seasons of the dating variety show, Heartbeat 72 Hours, further enriching the pen entertainment content on our platform. Under our strict screening process for content procurement and production, we had over 30% fewer total licensed and self-produced events and programs in 2022 compared with the previous year. Our total viewing data, however, remains steady. Although our Q4 terminal license cost was significantly higher due to the World 2022, which was a major contributor to our gross loss for the quarter, we will stay true to our focus of covering key events that are popular among users while striving to achieve better ROIs. As we disclosed in January, we entered into an amended licensing agreement for a series of League of Legends matches. We believe this will effectively lower our overall terminal licensing costs 
in 2023. In the fourth quarter, we also continue to optimize broadcaster-related costs and bandwidth usage. We became more efficient with our operating expenses in Q4, reducing our total operating expenses by 35% year-over-year and 10% quarter-over-quarter. Our savings were primarily driven by lower expenses associated with sales and marketing channels and personnel. In our overseas business, we further narrow our operating loss. Thanks to our strategy to concentrate on key markets and promote greater localization, we plan to continue strengthening our prudent cost and expense control strategy as we move forward. Next, moving on to our Q4 financial details. Our total net revenues were RMB 2.1 billion for Q4, a decline from RMB 2.81 billion for the same period last year. Live streaming revenues were RMB 1.98 billion for Q4, compared with RMB 2.61 billion for the same period last year. The decrease was primarily due to lower every spending per paying user and a decreased number of paying users on Huya Life. As the challenging micro and regulatory environment adversely affected paying users' sentiment. Advertising and other revenues were RMB 127 million for Q4, compared with RMB 196 million for the same period last year. This was primarily due to soft demand for advertising services, resulting from the challenging micro environment, as well as lower content sub licensing revenues. I also would like to point out that following our amended licensing agreement for League of Legends matches in January, we no longer own the sublicensing rights for LPL matches during the 2023 to 2025 period. Since the sublicensing of the LPL matches was the primary contributor to our content sublicensing revenues in 2022, we expect the content sublicensing revenue to decline significantly in 2023. Cost of revenues decreased by 15% year over year to RMB 2.39 billion for Q4, primarily due to decreased revenue sharing fees and content costs, as well as bandwidth costs. Revenue sharing fees and content costs decreased by 12% year over year to RMB 2.17 billion for Q4 primarily due to the decrease in revenue sharing fees associated with the decline in live streaming revenues. This is partially offset by the increase in spending on eSport content, which was mainly related to the higher content costs, both for LOL World 2022 in Q4 2022. Bandwidth costs decreased by 46% year-over-year to RMB 100 million for Q4. This was primarily due to improved bandwidth cost management and continued technology enhancement efforts, as well as less bandwidth usage as a result of strategic adjustments in our overseas business to stay focused on key markets. Cross loss was RMB 284 million for Q4, primarily due to lower revenues and increased content costs related to eSport content, particularly worth 2022. Gross margin was negative 13.5% for Q4. 
excluding share-based compensation expenses. Non-GAAP gross loss was RMB 278 million, and non-GAAP gross margin was negative 13.2% for Q4. Research and development expenses decreased by 13% year over year to RMB 144 million for Q4, primarily due to decreased personnel related expenses and share based compensation expenses. Sales and marketing expenses decreased by 48% year over year to RMB 113 million for Q4, primarily due to decreased marketing and promotion fees as well as personnel-related expenses. General and administrative expenses decreased by 13% year-over-year to RMB 79 million for Q4, primarily due to decreased share-based compensation expenses. Other income was RMB 44 million for Q4, compared with RMB 56 million for the same period of 2021, primarily due to lower tax refunds and government subsidies. As a result, operating loss was RMB 577 million for Q4, compared with RMB 457 million for the same period of 2021. Interest and short-term short investment income were RMB 102 million for Q4, compared with RMB 62 million for the same period of 2021, primarily due to increased interest rates. Net loss attributable to Huya Inc. was RMB 524 million for Q4 compared with RMB 313 million for the same period of 2021. Non-GAAP net loss attributable to Huya Inc. was RMB 440 million for Q4, compared with RMB 242 million for the same period of 2021. Non-GAAP net loss margin was 20.9% for Q4. Diluted net loss per ADS was RMB 2.16 for Q4. Non-GAAP diluted net loss per ADS were RMB 1.81 for Q4. As of December 31st, 2022, the company had cash and cash equivalents, short-term deposits short-term investments and long-term deposits of RMB 10.7 billion, compared with RMB 11 billion as of September 30, 2022. Moving on to our full year 2022 results. Total net revenues for 2022 decreased to RMB 9.22 million billion from RMB 11.35 billion for the prior year. Live streaming revenues were RMB 8.2 billion for 2022, compared with RMB 10.19 billion for the prior year. Advertising and other revenues were RMB 1.02 billion for 2022 compared with RMB 1.17 billion for the prior year. Non-GAAP gross profit was RMB 643 million, and non-GAAP gross margin was 7% for 2022. Non-GAAP net loss attributable to Huya Inc. was RMB 281 million, and non-GAAP net loss margin was 3.1% for 2022. Non-GAAP diluted net loss per ADS was RMB 
1.17 for 2022. To be mindful of the length of our earnings call, for additional details on our full year 2022 financial results, I encourage listeners to refer to our earnings press release issued earlier today. With that, I would now like to open the call to your questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, please press star 1 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, please press star 1 1 again. For the benefit of all participants on today's call, if you wish to ask a question to management in Chinese, please immediately repeat your question in English. Once again, that's star 1 1 for questions. Our first question comes from the line. Of Thomas Chong from Jefferies. Please ask your question, Thomas. 晚上好,谢谢管理长接受我的提问。我有两个问题。第一个是关于今年用户的趋势。另外一个问题是关于我们看到版号翻开之后,新的游戏对于我们用户的影响。uh, thanks management for taking my questions. Um, I have two questions. Uh, the first question is about uh, the user trend uh, for this year, and number two um, is about uh, the ban how approvals. Uh, how should we think about the new games getting approved, uh, and which might uh, affect um, uh, our user uh, growth momentum? Uh, thank you. I will answer this. This year, in the user experience, we will be more focused on MAO. 我们会更加重视用户在平台的粘性和参与度，通过更加沉浸化、社区化和互动化的产品策略，提升用户在平台内容的消费、提升用户流程和互动的指标，从而实现用户在平台上付费的增加，同时我们也会持续在推广和渠
，激励为心流提供流量等资源的扶持，希望能够及时抓住心流的机会。With the normalization of the release of licenses of games, some major games have obtained licenses and have gone,、uh, have been launched or will be launched soon. So the live content of these games, is, if they are popular, and with the launch of esports events of these games, we believe that it will be conducive to the growth of the uses of live platform, and we will also have the opportunity to bring us more additional user growth. At the same time, we'll make sufficient preparations for the launch of new games,、um, such as the recruitment of streamers or guilds, hosting events. Cooperating with game studios to provide incentives for the launch of new games, provide traffic and other resources support for new games, so as to seize the opportunities of new games in a timely manner. Thank you. Let's have the next question, please. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Ewen Zhang from China Renaissance. Please ask your question, Ewen. 哎，好的，哎，国庆晚上好，谢谢接受我的提问。我想问一下，咱们今年这直播跟电竞电竞赛事那边的一个内容的策略，然后以及咱们一月清楚那个英雄联盟补充协议对于公司整体的一个财务还有运营的影响，啊、呃，谢谢。So my question is regarding our live stream and the esports tournament content strategy for this year, and specifically we signed an amendment agreement on the game and the tournament back in January. What's the impact on our financials and our operation? Thank you. 那个从直播的内容来看，我们会持续的加强主播端的一些优势，通过为主播提供更多的服务和更多的收入，来增强平台对于主播的竞争力。同时，通过更多的直播互动的一些功能，以及这个虚拟直播等这些技术，来丰富直播的形式。让 UGC 的主播的直播这个内容能够更加的创新。From the perspective of live broadcast content, we'll continue to strengthen the advantages of the streamers and also to enhance the competitiveness of the platform by providing more services and revenue sources for them. At the same time, the application of more、um, live interaction functions and virtual live broadcast technologies will help us to enrich the、uh, live broadcast forms and make the content of UGC streamers more innovative and interesting for the users. 而在那个电竞赛事这个方面，之前的电话会上面我们提到过，我们会持续对版权和自办赛事的投入做。严格的筛选，版权赛事上面，我们会跟各个版权方去争取更好的商业条款。自制内容上面，我们希望能够形成精品化的虎牙赛事的品牌，希望能够巩固自制内容的 IP 的矩阵。而对于一些这个性价比不高的赛事内容，我们会考虑减少采购和投入。In terms of the esports events,、uh, we mentioned in the previous conference call that we'll continue to strictly screen the investment opportunities in copyrighted and self-run events. And in the copyrighted championship, we will strive for better commercial terms with all the copyright owners. And in the self-made content, we'll focus more on forming high-quality Huya competition brand and to consolidate IP metrics of、uh, self-made content. And we'll continue to、uh, reduce the procurement and investment for some relatively poor performing event content. 目前来看，我们今年在电竞的主要赛事方面会继续覆盖英雄联盟的 IPL、S 赛等、王者荣耀的 KPL、和平精英的 PEL 以及英雄联盟手游的联赛、穿越火线的职业的联赛。我们也会有一些独播的赛事，比如说 ESL。的 Dot Two 和 CSGO 的一些赛事，以及英雄联盟的 LC LCK 赛事。如果市面上有新的游戏相关的电竞的赛事推出，我们也会这个动态的引入。At present, we'll continue to cover the LPL as games of the、um, LOL, the KPL, the PEL of PS Elite, the LL Mobile, and the Crossfire Professional League as our main events. 
We will also have some exclusive events such as Dota 2 or CSGO series events of ESL and LCK events uh, of the League of Legends. So if there are new game related esports events on the market uh, made available, we would also dynamically evaluate and introduce new events if that is possible. 好的,那我来回答一下关于英雄联盟赛事补充协议的财务影响 协议中赛事的总成本较二年会下显著降低。那同时，由于虎牙不再拥有LPL赛事的转授权权利，我们在版权分销收入上的版权分销商的收入将会降低。总的来说，我们预计相关赛事的成本在二零二三年较二零二二
。那二零二二年上半年的国内直播收入基数仍然是比较高，因此我们预计今年上半年直播收入同比会偏弱一些。而从季节上来看，由于活动比较小，以及春节等的原因 ，Q 一一般是直播营收的一个淡季。那今年呢，还会受到放开后的一些叠加的因呃因素影响。In terms of live broadcast revenue, after the launch of the new policy last May, we subsequently implemented it according to the requirement. And the impact of these adjustments on revenue mainly began in June. So in this case, the domestic live broadcast revenue base. In the first half of 2022, was relatively high, so we expect that the revenue in the first half of this year will be weaker year on year. Moreover, from a seasonal perspective, due to fewer activities and the Chinese New Year festival and other factors, Q1 is generally a off season for live streaming revenue, and this year will also be affected by. Some factors after the COVID open up as well. 呃，我们希望后面的季度直播收入能够逐步企稳。那一方面，同比的基数会好一些，并且我们也在持续对产品和运营活动做打磨，去增强变现能力。比如推出一些新的直播互动玩法和对于虚拟礼物的一些优化设计。同时，我们对整体经济环境的复苏以及更多游戏上线保持乐观。So we hope that the revenue of subsequent quarters will gradually stabilize. Uh, because on one hand, the year-on-year -year base will be better, and we are also continuing to polish our product and operational activities so as to enhance the monetization of our um, business operations, such as introducing some new interactive plays as well as optimizing the design of the virtual gifts. At the same time, we remain optimistic about the recovery of the overall economic environment and the launch of more games. 我们的直播收入里面有一部分是，有一小部分是来自于海外游戏直播的收入。那由于去年四月开始做了一些业务方面的调整，这块业务的收入从二零二二年 Q2 开始经历了一些下降。那目前在持续加强本土化运营的基础上，我们也对呃 Nemo 海外直播的业务里面的泛娱的内容进行扩充，相信这将有利于商业化变现以及海外直播收入的逐步提升。A small part of our live revenue comes from our overseas business Nemo, and due to the business optimization since last April, the revenue had experienced a year-on-year decrease since the second quarter of 2022. And at present, on the basis of continuing to strengthen the localized operation, we also expand Nemo's pen entertainment content, which we believe will be conducive to generate improvement. Improvement for commercial performance and overseas revenue for our business. 在直播以外的收入，随着今年市场环境以及游戏版号的恢复，我们认为广告收入有机会得以复苏。但由于 LOL SaaS 版权协议的修订，会导致我们在版权收入上相比二二年会有较大的一个下降。因此，我们预计整体的广告和其他板块的收入。可能会有所下降。那与此同时，包括游戏方面的一些新业务机会上，我们也在探索变现，希望能够跑通流程。In terms of the other revenues, um, with the recovery of market environment and re and, and the licensing coming up again this year, we believe that advertising revenue will have some opportunity to recover this year. However, because of the um, supplementary uh, agreements uh, we signed in January, this will lead to some decline in our copyright revenue compared with the year of 2022. We predict that the overall revenue of advertising and other sectors may decline. Um, at the same time, we are also exploring new business opportunities, including games and etc., hoping to get to some success. Okay, thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Lei Zhang from Bank of America. Please.
please ask your question, Lei. Oh, hi, uh, 管理层晚上好，谢谢接受我的提问。呃，我的问题主要是关于我们之前的这个视频业务的，可以介绍一下现在视频业务整体的进展，还有呃，我们整个公司二零二三年的产品和运营的重点是哪些？啊、uh, ，谢谢，我自己翻译一下。啊、uh, ，Thank you, management, for taking my question. My question is about our video business. Uh, can you give us some updates on this video business and what is our uh product and operation focus for twenty twenty? Three，thank 除了常规的剪辑工具之外，我们的 AI 实时剪辑可以通过 AI 识别、实时分析、直播视频流的内容，自动捕捉精彩的这个、这个、这个看点，能够生成精彩的视频的片段。这对于竞技类游戏和赛事内容的这个视频的产出，可以持续提供有效的支持，有助于提升用户和主播的创作的效率和积极性。在二二年。虎牙上的视频上传的数量相比二一年增长接近百分之五十，加强了平台内容的丰富度。In terms of our video business, um, in terms of the content production, in addition to our live streamers, uh, we also have um, a lot of video content creators joining force, and we have been able to accumulate large volume of original materials for video content processing. And in addition to conventional editing tools, we also have AI real-time editing function that can analyze the、um, live stream content in real time through AI recognition technology and automatically capture the highlights in the live streaming processes to generate video clips, which can provide effective support for video production of competitive games and events. And help to improve the creation efficiency and enthusiasm of the users and streamers.、Um, in the year of 2022, the number of video uploads on Tuya has increased by nearly 50%, enriching the content that are available in our platform. 那好，同时呢，我们在不断这个优化视频内容生态下面，结合沉浸式的视频的体验。以及游戏社区中间的这个视频内容的嵌入，虎牙用户对视频内容的消费也有了明显的提升。去年 Q4， 虎牙 App 上面视频内容的渗透率创了新高，同时用户在 App 端视频内容的观看的总时长同比增长超过百分之四十。视频内容的发展推动了虎牙社区化的工作获得了初步的成效。对于整体的虎牙内容的生态，我们认为。在直播的技术上面，朝着泛直播来发展，形成与与直播进一步融合的视频的消费的生态。我们相信，这会增强平台对于用户的吸引力，长期来看能够帮助拓展、获得用户、增加营收的渠道。At the same time,、uh, as we continually optimize our video content ecosystem, combined with immersive vertical screen viewing format, a video content being embedded in the game community, our Huya users' consumption of video content had also significantly increased. In the fourth quarter of last year, the penetration rate of video content on Huya app reached a new high. At the same time, the total screen time on application increased by more than 40% year on year. So the development of our video businesses has promoted a community-based development of Huya. And for an overall content ecosystem in Huya, we believe that it will develop towards a pen live broadcasting format and form an ecosystem for video consumption that will be further integrated with live broadcasting. This will also help to increase the attractiveness of the platform to users. And in the long run, it will help us to expand the channels to obtain users and increase revenue.
在二三年，我们会继续推进产品的迭代升级，巩固虎牙核心直播业务的优势，同时持续推动视频业务的发展和社区化。此外，我们会重视将直播运营的能力升级为针对主播赛事以及游戏场上的泛直播、全链路的服务，利用虎牙在新游主播赛事及游戏厂商联动的积累，为游戏的运营和推广。提供更多的价值，从而为我们在中长期增长游戏相关的服务做好准备。And for the year of 2023, we will continue to promote product upgrades, consolidate the advantages of a Puya of Huya's core businesses, and continue to promote video community. In addition, we will also attach importance to upgrading our operation capability. Uh, for a pan live streaming full link services for the streamers, events, and game companies, utilize our expertise in new games, in streaming, events, and game companies to provide more value for the operation and promotion of the games, so as to prepare ourselves for the growth of our game-related service revenue in the mid and long term. Thank you. Next question, please. Here, our next question comes from the line of Felix Liu from UBS. Please ask your question, Felix. Hey, 管理层晚上好，感谢管理层接受我的提问。我是 UBS Daniel Han， 代表 Felix Liu 来提问。我这边主要有两个问题。首先，能否请管理层介绍一下游戏直播行业的竞争现状？如何看待当前竞争环境下主播分成和内容成本的趋势？然后，我的第二个问题是。能否简要介绍一下二零二三年虎牙整体的利润率趋势？谢谢。Let me translate myself.、Uh, good evening, management. Thanks for taking my question. This is Daniel Han from UBS on behalf of Felix Liu. I have two questions today. First, could you please briefly tell us about the current competitive landscape in game live streaming sector? How would the competition impact the revenue sharing ratio and the content cost? And my second question is: How is the margin outlook for 2023? Can we expect a sequential improvement on margins from last year? Thank you. Ah, Huya's market share, from the current level, is stable. In the gaming and video streaming field, especially in the core games, we maintain the top position. Generally speaking, the market share is still active, although in the current competitive landscape. 较之前已经更具理性，所以我们认为虎牙的竞争力在于这个更垂直的游戏用户群体和专业的电竞内容生态，而电竞内容的生态得力于虎牙成熟的内容的生产的体系、工会的合作、对于这个优质直播内容的稳定的供给以及完善的版权赛事、自制内容和跟游戏厂商的紧密的合作的关系。Thank you for this question.、Um, our Huya's market share is still relatively stable, and we have maintained a dominant position in the field of games and live streaming of esports, especially in the core games. Overall, the market competition still exists, but the behavior of each platform is more rational than that of the previous year or two. We believe that Huya's competitiveness lies in our more vertical game user group and a more professional esports content ecosystem, which benefited from our mature content production system, the stable supply of high-quality live content through guild cooperation and copyrighted games, as well as self-made content. And also, we had close cooperation with the game companies. 嗯、呃，好的，那我回答一下关于成本和利润方面的一些问题。呃，那在主播分成和签约成本方面，呃，自从二一年主播分成比例有所提升之后呢，二零二二年我们的主播分成比例整体是比较平稳的。在当前的市场竞争格局之下，我们预计今年的主播分成比例和签约成本的趋势依然会比较稳定。那后续主要要看市场的一个情况，可能也会有一些调整的空间。同时，基于前面提到的赛事节目内容成本的优化，我们预计全年的毛利率相较2022年会有所提升
，同时毛利率在季度之间的波动也将会比二零二二年会小一些。Ms. Wu would cover the cost and profit trends. In terms of the commission sharing and contracting costs, well, since the proportion of、uh, commission sharing increased in 2021, our proportion,、uh, our、uh, sharing ratios have been relatively stable in 2022. And under the current market competition, we expect that this year's、uh, sharing ratio and signing cost trend will remain relatively stable. And the future will depends on the market situation and updates. But still, there will probably be some room for adjustment. At the same time, based on the optimization of the cost of uh, the uh, turn tournament and championships, as well as the optimization of the content cost, we expect that the gross profit rate of the whole year will increase compared with the year 2022, and the fluctuation on our gross margin、uh, between quarters will be smaller than that of 2022. 呃，在运营费用方面，我们会持续持续持续重视运营效率的提升。呃，从二零二二年 Q2 开始，我们加强降本增效方面的一些措施，运营费用连续三个季度同比双位数下降。在二三年，我们会继续保持严格的预算控制，巩固会费用优化的成果，降低亏损，提高盈利能力是今年财务的重点。我们希望这将为后续。In terms of、uh, operating expenses,、uh, we'll continue to strengthen、uh, our measures to improve the operational efficiency.、Um, since the second quarter of 2022, we have started to strengthen the cost reduction and efficiency improvement、uh, measures, and operating expenses have declined by double digit year on year for three consecutive quarters already. And in the year 23, we'll continue to maintain a strict budget control and consolidate the results of cost cutting, reducing losses, and improve profitability will be the focus of this year's finance work. And we hope that this will lay a good foundation for the subsequent return to growth and long-term profitability of our company. Okay, thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, now I'd like to turn the call back to the company for closing remarks. Thank you once again for joining us today. If you have further questions, please feel free to contact Huya Investor Relations through the contact information provided on our website or the Piacente Group Investor Relations. Thank you. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect your line.